Bionic Dance is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Pastor Greg Locke here. You know there are three fundamental questions that every single person has always been asking and forevermore will be asking? Three questions? Are there? What are they? Wait, that was three. I guess we're done here. Or let's do this. <laughs> Greetings, fellow space travelers. Bionic Dance here. It's that Greg Locke guy again, but you know what? There haven't been many questions for atheist videos out there in years. And while he's very specific that these questions of his have to be asked by everybody, it's something. So let's hear him. Number one, how did I get here? Now, how you answer that question will fundamentally change what we call your world view. The problem with this question is that it's too simple. It makes a lot of assumptions, the first of which is that we came from somewhere, that there is an us that wasn't in this universe and then somehow at some point arrived here. A much better way to ask this question is, how did I come to be? But before you can answer that, you have to ask, what am I? You might think you come from some spirit realm to inhabit a flesh sack for a few decades, or you might more reasonably see yourself as a product of those meaty bits. For as near as anybody has ever been able to show, it's the brain that generates us, our identity, our ability to think, to know, to be, to experience. No god required. A deity or spirit of any kind is superfluous to that equation. So when you ask, what am I? You are a biological being, a collection of matter and energy that works in unison as part of a complex system. When you ask, how did I come to be, you specifically came to be because your parents fucked. If you want to know how life came to be, you have to describe what life is, which, again, is that collection of matter and energy working in concert. Many people like to put life up on some pedestal, like it's some magical thing that's been added to matter. But if that were so, then why is it that every death happens when the body breaks, when the biology becomes so damaged or worn out that it stops working? The fact is that you are a meat machine, and you die when your warranty runs out. So how did life come to be? We don't know exactly, but we know enough about what life is to know that a god's help would have been unnecessary regardless. Number two, what am I doing here? You see, if you believe that you have just happened upon life, that you just accidentally and coincidentally showed up, then really the answer to why am I here doesn't make any difference because there's no purpose for your existence. It's just an accident. Religious people seem so damned fond of that word, accident, when describing something which was not done deliberately. But accident implies chaos and disarray. It's almost as if they can't conceive of a system which does not require knowing, conscious attendance to keep running. And yet, gravity, physics, chemistry, and the like all seem to perform perfectly fine without deliberate direction. One might say that they run on automatic without thinking. Those aren't accidents, and neither is biology. Their insistence that the only options available for the origin of life are order from chaos or being God's model kit shows a certain kind of willful blindness. It often seems they keep the allowable causes limited because it helps their argument, the truth be damned. But if you believe in a divine creator, that means you have a divine purpose. God made you for a reason. So the first question is, how did I get here? Secondarily, that question should be, what am I doing here? If you believe in a divine creator, that means you believe you have a divine purpose, not that you do have one. So before you answer this second question, you're going to have to prove your answer to the first one is true. Otherwise, you're just lying to yourself, making up your own purpose, or letting someone else, like a priest or the authors of the Bible, make it up for you. And so if it turns out you're wrong, there is no God, and there is no purpose but the one you make for yourself, you're missing out on the only opportunity you'll ever have to shape the direction of the one life you'll ever get. Talk about a waste. And if it turns out you're right, the only purpose I've ever heard any theist claim is to serve God. Well, what kind of life is that? Thanks, but no thanks. I look at all of the possibilities in this world, all of the things I could do with my existence, all of the opportunities I could have in my life, 
and I'm glad there is no God, no holy text telling me that certain ones are forbidden. You're going to tell me that there are certain things I'm not allowed to do because of, say, the shape of my naughty bits? Yeah, right. Any God who wants to say that can go right ahead and lick my warm and steaming rectal tract. And that goes double for his followers, because they say it and believe in something ludicrously stupid. But then thirdly, where am I going when I leave? Well, that's the question of the ages, isn't it? And now we're back to the problem of the first question. Leaving implies that there is somewhere to go. You don't leave, you break. And then you decompose. Nobody likes to think they'll just end someday. But making up crazy shit about clouds, harps, and halos to comfort yourself is just childish. Let me tell you something. Regardless of how you answer those questions, you are going to meet your maker because you have been created for a reason. And you're either going to meet him on his terms or your terms. Well, on my terms, there's nothing in me. So, hey, cool. I'm down with that. And you know what? You don't have to lose sleep over those three questions because the Bible entirely and gracefully has beautiful answers. Beautiful? Well, even if you think so, which I don't, Beautiful does not mean true. So here's my question to you. Are we after answers or comfort? Until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please think. And remember, if it can't be in your hand, it's all in your head.